Hey everybody, it's Neil from Zig, and I decided I wanted to set up a tutorial, or maybe a tutorial series on doing ArcViz in Blender. And the reason I decided to give this a shot is because I started playing around with the Cycles render in Blender 2.8, and uh, I thought it looked fantastic. You know, particularly the quality of the light uh, in Cycles uh, feels very realistic, uh, but also you know, very warm and very pleasing. And I thought it's a perfect render engine uh, for using uh, in ArcViz. So I, I want to show a few things in this scene and talk about, uh, you know, what you're trying to do, what the objective is when you're creating an ArcViz scene. And I'm going to talk about some of the deficiencies here, like things that could be improved because there's a lot of those things. And, uh, and I'm going to talk about kind of basic setup of some of the stuff I did and also where I got some of the assets I use so you guys have a good resource for finding, uh, finding assets for your own scenes. So here's the scene. We have this modern looking house. They've got a pool, they've got a you know, lounge area, they've got a seating area with some kind of dangerous seats. And there's some you know, landscaping I did around here. Um, so if we're gonna look at something uh, technical, so here's the grass. So I just have this, um, you know, kind of polygonal plane here with a cutout for the swimming pool. Uh, over here, you can see it's cut out as well. That's because there's a driveway over here. And uh, the grass is just a grass clump, uh, which I, um, you know, which I found uh, on the internet and I'll, I'll share the links to these things for you later. Uh, I cleaned up the model. Uh, it was uh, several pieces so I uh, just grouped it together into one model. Uh, you use control J to do that. It joins everything you have selected together into one object uh, but preserves UV maps and whatever you want to do. And then uh, here's how I set up a shader for it. So the shader uses an object info node that goes uh, you know, has the random output connected to facing on a color ramp. Uh, the color ramp just adds some variation in color to the grass, which we put in the base color of a principal uh, DSDF, and then that goes into our surface output. So um, that's it for how the grass clump was done. Um, and here is the uh, ground plane where the grass is scattered. So the way that was done was using a particle system. You set that to hair uh, and then adjust the length to something that looks about right. And you get a pretty good read on this in the viewport. When it, viewport. When it comes in, it's just gonna be a bunch of straight lines and you can decide how long they are. Uh, you want your source, uh, in this case I emitted from faces, and random distribution seemed to be better. The other option is jittered, uh, but that seemed to create uh, lines in the grass and I think there's a way to experiment with that to you know maybe start to make um, different kinds of shapes or like mowing patterns or things like that but um, I haven't had too much time to get into that but I, I might try and experiment with that later um, and then in terms of the other settings you care about it is the render settings and here I just chose an object so when you do that uh, you get this drop down and I picked grass you could also do this with a collection so if you wanted to have uh, multiple clumps grouped together uh, of different lengths. You could, um, you could you know, inside a collection, you could use that collection as your source. And you want to make sure you check off global coordinates because that's what's going to get the grass oriented correctly. If, if it's not global coordinates, it doesn't seem to sit right uh, on the surface. So, you know, the, the, you know where this starts to fall apart, uh, now getting into like for me, the way I would use this image would be, this would be my first pass for a client because there's a lot of imperfection in it, but at the same time, it's good enough that we can start to establish a conversation about lighting, about furniture and, and fur outdoor furnishings, about uh, you know, the type of vegetation and landscaping that we're doing. And, uh, and we can start to get into more specific stuff later. You know, this tree, for instance, I mean, the, the, the bark is really nothing. It's just a single color. Um, the, the leaves are a, a little bit dense and, and feel too bushy, and there's certainly a much better tree model we can probably find and substitute in here. But at the same time, this becomes a conversation starter with the client. Um, I would say along here, 
Um, you know, we have no rounding or beveling on these edges. These are perfectly square, uh, and so they feel a little fake, and there's also not a lot in terms of, you know, texture uh, to these surfaces, and uh, we might want to add an indication of that, certainly cycles, um, in terms of the way it anti-aliases. Uh, it's going to pick that up. Same on this wall uh, back here, the, uh, the perimeter wall of this property. Um, the interior, which is going to be the next video that I do, um, obviously has nothing inside it. These rooms are all empty and it would read a lot. I mean, these ones here, maybe not so much, although you will see an indication of things if we put them there. Uh, and uh, But in here, for sure, uh, there's absolutely no furniture. It just it feels like an empty dead space. I would also say that, um, you know, another thing I want to work on with this is these reflections here, I would like to see better reflection fall off. They're a little bit too sharp. And, uh, and you know, I'm, I'm not perfectly happy with that. I'd like to be able to read uh, the room or the space behind here a little bit better than I can. Um, I would say that's about it for the major things that I see. Uh, but certainly, uh, you know, happy to get feedback and see what we can do to improve this. I mean, maybe, uh, you know, I might find these planters a little big as well. Um, but I also think there's a number of really, you know, good things about it. I think the lighting is very good, particularly uh, in here around these loungers. I think that just looks beautiful. Uh, the textures, a lot of them are really, really simple. And, uh, you, you know, a lot of them are just a color, uh, literally. And, and but just adding some variation between you know, different built objects through here and, um, you know, in here on these, on these loungers and that kind of stuff, uh, really, um, allows a sense of, of realism. Just that combination of, of light and clarity that Cycles gives you, um, allows you to work with things that are much simpler and still deliver, you know, what I consider to be, you know, a really pretty realistic image and a really good start with some really lovely lighting. Um, and I think that, you know, what it is about now is continuing to sort of look at the, the scene, maybe the interior uh, and exterior uh, and improve it. Um, until next time, next time I'm going to be fitting out the interior, but I hope this is helpful. Uh, and uh, feel free to play around the scene and feel free to ask any questions uh, below. Thanks a lot.